there's a micro focus on AWS, how much money is being put into investment, and then how much money is coming out in the AI story. What did you make of it, Helena? Well, I think the hot topic for the last few weeks has been the huge capex spend, whether it's justifiable. I mean, Amazon has guided exceptional increase in capex since the last quarter. In the first half of 2024, their capex was 30.5 billion. They're guiding even higher amount for the second half of the year. Just to put in comparison, their capex for the entire year last year was only 40.8 billion. So that is definitely a very significant increase. So like all the other big tech companies, um, they're selling their story of strong AI growth, very confident in their AI game. They would like to have more capacity than they already have today. And they're claiming that they're seeing strong signals of high future demand. I guess also if you're in the AI race, it's almost impossible for you to stop investing in AI because in a short period, you will be obsolete with no means to catch up. But to investors, it really requires a lot of impatience, um, everyone is telling the okay. same story of investing in AI, so it's hard to say whether in the short term whose investment will pay off in the long run. Helena, uh, uh, just focused on AWS, we, we've hardly discussed the retail business or even advertising. Did you see anything in those segments of the business that, that interested you? Um, for AWS, it has been accelerating nicely and 19% year on year. So what we especially like about AWS is their high operating margin compared to retails because AWS operating margin is 36% compared to retails, which is only single digit. So AWS right now only contribute to 18% of the total revenue. So we do believe with AWS scaling up so fast, it is going to take up a bigger portion of the entire revenue. So we think the real kicker for Amazon in the future would be the margin expansion brought by AWS. Let's talk about Apple. You know, I, I look at the numbers. It was basically a beat across the board apart from China. How much emphasis do you put on that China number? Well, um, I would say Apple is saying they still see it already as an improvement compared to the first half of the year, but the numbers are definitely not great. Usually when a particular market is not doing well, Apple will specifically point out it's not really the iPhone, but actually the other product category that drag the sales, but they have not commended like that for this particular time. So we can take it that Apple is actually, iPhone is actually part of the reason, or in fact, one major reason for the decline. So domestic competition from local brand is still playing a big part. Apple was giving out a huge discount in order to fight the competition. They were. So that will also be one of the factor that hurts the revenue. Tim Cook and Luca Maestri got a lot of questions about how Apple intelligence will impact an upgrade cycle in October, probably, when, when the 16th generation comes. Have you done the math on that? Yes, I did. So iPhone sales still remain pretty muted. Um, they're down 1% year over year for this quarter. Um, so um, if we actually do the math, they're guiding for 5% growth rate in the next quarter. So factor in um, service sector, which is continually growing double digit, and iPad, which grew pretty well, also double digit in this quarter. So we're probably not going to give so much in the next quarter in terms of iPhone. It's probably going to remain flat or actually perform more poorly. So we're thinking that Apple intelligence boost for the product cycle that everyone's been waiting for is probably unlikely to be seen in 2024. It's more of a 2025 story.